At first glance, gender inequality may not seem like a problem at Edinburgh University. In reality, it's a different story. Looking at the statistics, there are startling disparities. Last month, the Scottish Funding Council published a Gender Action Plan to address gender imbalances at Scottish universities. The aim is that by 2030, no subject will have more than 75% of any one gender. The report also aims to narrow the gap between male and female undergraduate enrolment. We went to discuss the proposals with the Feminist Society. Gender inequality is a huge issue specific, like, specifically in STEM subjects. But I think that needs to be kind of addressed from much younger. So in primary school and in secondary school, boys and girls should be taught, you know, that this is just a subject that's really interesting, not, you know, science is for boys and music and art is for girls. I think it's something that needs to happen much earlier. Having spoken to the Feminist Society, it would seem there's more to be done to tackle gender stereotypes developing at a younger age. I'm here at the National Museum to speak to the director of the Edinburgh International Science Festival about how to go about this. How do you encourage girls to get into STEM subjects or boys to get into art subjects, for example? When does that start? How do we about encouraging young people and their parents in, to, to get more involved in science. Mm -hmm. And certainly young women get put off by many areas of science. Uh, they don't get put off by biology and life sciences, but they do get put off by physics and chemistry mm -hmm. and the technical subjects, which is a great treasure. I went to speak to the Director of Student Recruitment and Admissions to find out the biggest gender equality issues facing Edinburgh University. It's interesting that, that the Gender Action Plan, the interim report, um, mentions the link between socioeconomic disadvantage and gender. Um, and there's an increasing body of evidence that shows the complexity of the sorts of relationships between um, different uh, identities, different underrepresented groups, and, and so gender, um, ethnicity, um, socioeconomic background, and so on, all interact. Um, and we need to be very careful in the work that, that we do to ensure that we're not just um, considering these different things in silos, but that we're bringing them together and we're thinking more holistically um, about uh, who's underrepresented, who we want to attract. Um, and, and how those things how those things do feed off each other. I, I, I think the challenges that face Edinburgh are the same as the challenges that face other universities across Scotland, across the UK and beyond. Um, you know, worldwide there are many more women entering higher education than there are men and even in those countries, you know, Nordic countries, which are so often held up as, as, as being um, far ahead of other parts of the world in terms of equality and, and representation, they still have a huge disparity in, in entry to higher education with many more women entering than men. Um, so wh whether it's gender, whether it's BME participation, whether it's, um, uh, whether it's socioeconomic background, I mean, these are all issues that certainly face Edinburgh but they face other universities um, too and, and, and we're very uh, keen to, to collaborate with other universities um, and we do that through things like the LEAPS partnership where they're working with others um, to try and tackle some of, these, some of these issues. The Gender Action Plan will be finalised this May. And by addressing gender stereotypes from a young age, these far-reaching proposals will lead to a more equal future across all levels of education.